federal law enforcement is not doing enough to manage the threat of migrant crime, rising rampant migrant crime. Take this latest example. An illegal immigrant wanted for rape in Oregon named Jose Sebastian made it all the way to Florida, where he was finally arrested for driving without a license. It was there that Martin County law enforcement discovered Sebastian was wanted for rape. To their shock, Immigration and Customs Enforcement refused to take custody of Sebastian. The agency claimed it had no more detainment space. Martin County law enforcement legally could not detain Sebastian any longer. They were forced to release Sebastian back onto the streets. But thankfully, after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Florida Congressman Brian Mast intervened, Martin County was given special legal authority to rearrest and to detain Sebastian. Sebastian now is in immigration custody in Miami. And of course, we're watching carefully to see what happens with him next. Will he be released again? Well, this is the immigration madness that we're dealing with. Every red state, every locality must empower their local law enforcement to arrest and detain criminal illegals. How many more Americans must die, must suffer uh, before our leaders get serious about this this really a, cr a major crisis on our hands. Joining us now for more on the contrast between President Trump and Biden's border policies is the aforementioned Congressman Brian Mast. Great to have you with us, Congressman. Uh, the, the, Martin, the Martin County incident, that is uh, appalling, but it's happening all over the country, isn't it? It's happening everywhere. And let's go a little bit more specific into that incident. He was released because ICE wouldn't detain him. We told ICE, literally told ICE, there's a warrant for this individual in Oregon uh, for multiple uh, uh, accounts uh, of sexual battery or, or rape. They didn't believe it. ICE didn't believe it until my chief of staff actually got a copy of it, presented it to them, and then they said, okay, fine, we'll go back out reluctantly to get this individual, but just him yeah. being uh, set for final dismissal from America, final removal from America, that wasn't good enough for them to actually go out there and pick him up, even though we knew he posed this other threat. And the reality is just in this one county of mine, Martin County, I have three counties, but just in Martin County, there's 30 such cases of individuals, illegal immigrants with priors that are being held as we speak, that if ICE doesn't take them, they're gonna be released into the streets. And that's for every county across America. And, and the encounters go on, the number of illegal uh, immigrants uh, running into this country, uh, well, they don't have to run, they're being uh, driven by in, in buses, uh, piloted uh, in charter aircraft all over the country. But there is no vetting, there is no system by which we know anything about where they are, what they're doing, or whether or not uh, these are actual criminals that have been brought into the country, invited in by the Biden administration. Uh, what are we going to do? What, there, is, there is no obvious intent on the part of this administration to do anything. Meanwhile, crime is rising spectacularly across the country, and millions of Americans are at risk of running into one of these criminal, illegal uh, aliens or perhaps a, an entire gang. Yeah, let's be clear about everything that you see Congress doing. Anything that Congress does on the border it's not an authority that President Biden needs from Congress. It's something that he can already do, but Republicans in Congress are so tired of him not doing it. We're trying to pass a bill, a law that says you have to go out and do this thing that you can already do, whether it's remain in Mexico, whether it's do something with the uh, asylum provisions, whether it's whatever, you can already do these authorities. You're choosing not to. We're telling you that we have that you have to. And obviously, if it makes sense to Republicans, it does not make sense to Democrats. They're not going to pass it through the Senate. And Joe Biden is not going to sign it into law. And so it's an exercise in futility. It is. And the futility means that there will be more people killed. There will be rising crime until a new president takes office. Give us your sense of just uh, the, the, the level uh, of, uh, if we may, the intensity of uh, the Republicans and moderates and independents in this country who mean to reelect Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump will be our next president. I'm proud to cheer his veterans campaign across America. Veterans see it. 
people that go to the grocery store see it, people that go to the gas pump see it, people in law enforcement and fire, first responders, anybody that just opens their eyes and can make that clear contrast of this was America under Donald Trump where we said we were going to make America great again. He's the last great general patent of our time. That guy that goes out there and says America loves a winner, hates a loser, doesn't give a damn about somebody that loses and laughs because to Americans, the idea of losing is hateful. That's what General Patton said in his speech to the Third Army, and that's the way Donald Trump lives his life. That's why he's the right man for the job. And no, no image could be more persuasive than watching President Biden shuffling along with a CPB officer uh, there uh, walking beside him uh, and President Trump in the midst of all of those people at the border uh, being s saluted, shouted at, and uh, uh, and trying to rally President Trump to get us to November 5th as quickly as we can. Congressman Mass, thanks for all that you do. We appreciate it so much, Congressman. Good to have you Thank with you, us. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, sir. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.